guys and welcome back to part 2 of this tutorial on how to make a knife from a 10mm drill bit if, you're not, if you haven't already seen part 1 it will be linked in the description down below and we're just going to start straight where we left off and we were just about to make the handle for the knife but first to make sure that I can actually fit the lids inside here I need to cut them up into smaller pieces so I've cut up loads of bits of various colours of HDP and now I'm just going to load them into this tube So I've put the tube in and I'm now going to leave it for 10 to 15 minutes. I've also slightly stood up the tube so that when the HDP melts, even though it is quite viscous, it's so that it doesn't just pour out of the end of the tube. So as you can see, it's all molten inside and there's not that much plastic in there because as this HDP melts, it sort of contracts very slightly. So I just need to take some more plastic and ram it in there with this pencil. As you can see, I'm also wearing some thicker gloves because this is at 180 degrees celsius and the HDP plastic is quite sticky so it's easily enough to burn and boil my skin if I do get it on me Now once the plastic's melted down a little bit I'm then going to be using this wooden dowel which I've shaved down so it fits perfectly inside the tube and I'm basically just going to be putting it in the tube and then hammering it down, compressing all of the plastic together and getting rid of any air bubbles. Continue to add even more HDP until the tube is completely full with molten plastic. So I think I've got this tube basically full of molten HDP now, as you can see it's almost up to the top inside there. So now I'm going to take the knife and I'm going to slot it inside like this, Just slowly push it into the plastic. There we go. Now I'm going to twist it to try and mix up some of the colours inside. Now I'm going to put it back into the oven for about 10-15 minutes to let all of the HDP sort of melt back onto the metal because at the moment I don't think they're really touching inside. So we've left it in there for a while now, it's probably been about 20 minutes and all of the HDP is now hopefully fused into the knife blade like this so now we can just pull it down and leave it to cool. So it's been about an hour and all of this is completely cool now, so I'm just going to take a hacksaw and cut away all of the metal. So I finally managed to pry the old metal bar off around this knife handle and I think it looks good so far. Now all that I've got to do is sort of chop off the excess off here and also cut its length on the bottom. So I've cut it off and just sort of filed off this top bit so that I can hold it like this but as you can see there's sort of a hole in here so when I do start to round the handle I think I might have to fill this with some more molten plastic. But for now let's start to shape the handle so that it feels more comfortable to hold and also so that it's not just in this boring circle shape. To do this you can pretty much use any woodworking tool since HDP works pretty similar to wood and I'm going to be using wood rasps to sort of get the basic shape, metal files to remove any deep scratches and also sanding drums to just sort of smooth everything out. So this is the knife handle once I've sort of rounded it and shaped it a little bit. It feels pretty nice in my hand and I'm sure it'll be good when it's done but as you can see if you just focus in here there's quite a lot of bumps and grooves inside this bit and air gaps basically where when I pushed the knife in and I twisted it it just opened up these air gaps here so I'm going to take a heat gun and I'm going to melt HDP into them so now I'm basically just going to use the heat gun like this to heat up all of the different bits of the plastic which have got voids in and then melt more plastic into them 
You could probably also use a soldering iron for this if you had one that goes hot enough. And you could maybe use a blowtorch or a lighter if you were very careful not to burn the plastic. So this is what the handle looks like after I've heated and melted plastic onto where all of the voids are and I've tried to melt on a variety of colours. Now I'm basically just going to refile it flat just using an old worn out metal working file and then I'll finish shaping it. So this is what the handle looks like after I've shaped it and it looks really nice. There's lots of different patterns showing evidently and now all that I've got to do is start to sand it up. So for sanding this handle up so that it's really really smooth I'm going to be using a combination of sanding sponges, lots of different types. You can buy these pretty much everywhere on eBay, just search sanding sponges. Combination of that, wet and dry paper and just regular wood sandpaper. So now it's pretty smooth and later on I'm going to do the final buff on it and it'll make it pretty much shiny. All I've got to do now is finish up the blade, polish it up and sharpen the blade first. So first I gave it a pass with just a blunt metal file and it's made it quite smooth. Now I'm going to move on to sandpaper. I'm going to start with some 180 wet and dry paper and just gradually move my way all the way up to 400 then 600. So this is what the side looked like before and this is what it looks like after just the 180 grit wet and dry paper. So I'm going to keep on sanding this side but I'm going to finish up this side first so I'm going to make sure that I do them both at the same time because I might end up sanding this side to almost a mirror finish then do this side and accidentally scratch up this side again. So I'm going to do them both at the same time. So I've sanded both sides up now and they're both at 180 grit wet and dry. So now I'm just going to use more and more fine sandpaper until it's really shiny. Also don't forget to remember to do the back of the spine on the knife as well because you want to have that shiny. Right, so this is what the knife looks like after I've finished sanding it, and it's only at 600 grit, but it's actually really shiny. It's pretty much mirror finish, and that lasts on both sides as well, and as well as on the spine of the knife. Now I'm going to sharpen it, and I'm also going to buff this handle bit here using a buffing wheel that I've got that I can't actually use on metal, so that's why I haven't used it to polish this, and then it's going to make the handle really shiny too. So I've now sharpened up the blade and you can feel it on the back of your thumb and it's really really sharp and it just carves wood really well. It also very easily passes the paper test. And as you can see the cuts are clean straight lines not ripped paper. So this is what the handle looks like after buffing and it now is really really smooth and shiny it feels really nice to hold. So this is what the finished knife looks like and I think that it looked really cool and it came out really nicely. It's incredibly sharp and I like how shiny that the blade is. It's almost mirror reflective at times. In the future I'm hopefully going to make a couple more knives out of larger draw bits maybe and because of the basically the surface area in the handle you can make the handles out of quite a lot of things i was thinking you could also do either a paper or denim wrap my carter around the handle that would work really nicely or you could even cast an aluminium handle and i might do that in the future so making this knife was sort of like a test getting started in blacksmithing and ever since i've bought my anvil i've sort of been upgrading some of my equipment and since making this knife i've also bought some blacksmith's tongs these mean that I'll be able to hold the workpiece much more strongly since I've got all of this leverage that I can pull against it and then it holds it in absolutely solidly. Much better than just using pliers and also much safer. On top of that, for safety equipment, I've also bought some welder's gauntlets which are fireproof 
and will hopefully help to protect my hands more from the heat of the forge and when casting. And as well as that, I've also bought a leather welder's apron from Silverline Tools and this will also hopefully help to protect me. So on top of all of that safety gear, I've also gone and stocked up on a lot of different steel which I can use for making knives and I've basically just got a whole load of steel that I can use here. I've got a file knife which I'm sort of in the process of making here and I've got another file which is worn down and I can also use that. I've got the remnants of an old circular saw blade which I can use but I've also got another one which is completely full and I can show you that later. I've got an old ball peen hammer which I'm in the process of forging into a tomahawk. This is sort of a test one and then I've got some more. I've also got this small sort of test knife and from a recommendation from one of the viewers in the comments section I actually bought a Mora knife blade blank and it's really nice steel and it's incredibly sharp, probably one of the sharpest knives which I've ever owned and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make the handle for this and as I mentioned earlier I might try and cast an aluminium handle for a hidden tang knife, probably not this one and I've still got some of my A2 tool steel left over that I don't really like but I've got this new billet of O1 tool steel lawnmower blade here, an old axe head here and just generally a lot of steel and if you have any recommendations for what you think I should make with all of this steel then post a comment down below. I really appreciate all of your feedback and I'd really appreciate if you told me, give, gave me some ideas for some projects to do with all of this different types of steel because I don't want to just keep on making the same things. Then on top of all of that I've gone and bought one five kilograms of plaster of Paris which is inside this bucket here and I'm going to be using this to make a new blacksmith's forge and there'll be a tutorial on that since my casting forge, which is more of a foundry, isn't really the right shape for blacksmithing knives. So thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and this was my first casting video so please comment down below saying how I can improve the method of making this knife and also with any suggestions that you want me to make with any of this new cool stuff. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you did enjoy my video, you might like some of my others and you can see previews of them here. If you want to find out the full videos, then go to my channel and check them out.